fingers. Oh, the recording is ready. So good morning, everyone. If you can show us an emoji of how you are feeling today before we get started. Any option? Okay. All right. <laughs> I'll see people like Fenuel and Biniam um, <laughs> sending different emojis. I hope you guys are well. I hope you are well. Yep, good morning, Biniam, to you as well. So yeah, let's get started. Uh, of course, we are very few here. We are around 13 of us. So let's show that everyone shares their progress. How was yesterday? And how are you starting today? And exactly what are you going to be working on? raise your hand and let's ensure that we are going to be using 30 minutes with everyone sharing we are going to start with uh Biniam, and then we go to Haptamu, and then fenuel and everyone else will go next Biniam. okay okay, uh, okay. Uh, good morning everyone i hope everyone is doing good uh, yesterday was you know and, uh, I was introduced with a new challenge and I was reading uh, some of the challenge looking and then it seems to work after the briefing that they did. So I decided to use a button, no, a top down approach to start experimenting with the composition by using the given assets. And since there is only one library and I think I should get familiar, I should familiarize myself to it before time runs out since we have you know a lot of resources when it comes to the image generation and text generation part. Now, since they said the crucial part is the image composition part, I'm trying to compose the available kind of uh, resources. So if you know so so far is I have kind of explained with but it's not a expect. I think I do was in a good looking with available results. Okay, this is my progress so far. And uh, if I can ask on the Slack. Thank you. All right, Biniam. Uh, you were quite working at the end, but I believe we got your point. And of course, reach out on Slack if you get any blockers. Yep, uh, let's go next. Have time. Okay, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, good yesterday, morning. Uh, I made a, a significant uh, progress on understanding some of uh, the documents. Firstly, I tried to understand uh, the input and uh, what the desires. Uh, then I focused on uh, the data uh, pre-processing. I saw uh, the uh, content of uh, the data and uh, I read some of uh, the provided materials. I also tried to do uh, ED anal EDA analysis in the exploration for uh, the data. So uh, overall, uh, it was uh, a productive day for me. Thank you. All right, glad to hear that. Have time with any blockers yet? Or all good? It's good, it's good. Okay, keep it up. Uh, Fenuel? Hi, Pascali. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Hi. Hi. Uh, good morning, everyone. So, my progress yesterday was sort of a research of sorts. Uh, I was reading the challenge document and the uh, links provided about the project. So the main thing is I figured it's deep learning. So uh, I'm trying to get more understanding about that and trying to look at tutorials about that. But the one thing I did that is sort of to get a better idea of the project is I have this creative director. So I called them up and try to get you know perspective of the process about the you know project since we're you know virtually creating a creative director so I think it's better to get an insight from that so they told me a couple of things about that so I think I got a better understanding but I'm still trying to figure it out. All 
it's a bit confusing, but I'm very sure that was the answer. So that is not correct. All right, Finn. Well, happy to hear that. Keep it up. Um, any blockers yet on your side as well? I mean, not a blocker, but still trying to get the whole idea, like the output and you know how to get there. So I think in the coming days it will be clear. Since we're gonna have discussions and all that. Okay. Okay. Let's wait and see. Um, but if you feel like your peers here can help you, I think we, we can start that conversation to talk about it. Do you think that's necessary or we wait? I, I mean, if someone is advanced in the technical stuff, maybe their perspective will help. I think that would be great. Yeah. Okay, guys, anyone? Anyone who has their, an idea on that? Oh, Fenwell, you can repeat, you can repeat so that they get to understand you well. Okay, so my question is like, you were supposed to create some sort of banners and, you know, uh, you know, configure them in a way that the frames make sense to convey a message. So after creating the image, what would be the output of it? Like, is it going to tell a story? Is it going to be something that explains, you know, frame by frame? So one thing the creative director told me is they don't have to make sense. The frame doesn't have to make sense. But the most important part of it is the first frame and the last frame. So making sense of uh, what we generate would be the crucial part of this project, I think. So if anyone has an idea about that, that's, what I, that's my question, if it's not too vague. Okay, I think Biniam has an idea. Biniam? Hey, I don't really think I have that much of an idea, but it's when I look Basically, like a sketch kind of thing, which conveys the context and how the output. It's like a, a sequence of trees, maybe a max of ten trees. It's like you just just need to know. Um, you are breaking, uh, Binium. Maybe you can leave and join again. Um, how about yeah, maybe we can have a lap uh, later or talk in the slot if you have That's not possible. Okay. Okay. So, uh, ensure that you chat about it on Slack. All right. Uh, let's have the next person. Anyone who wants to go next, we won't be nominating. So, hi, Pascaline. Oh, hi, Abby. Hi. Uh, so, if, like, I think there are a couple of people who wanted to present the last week's project today. And so, I, I just want to take this time actually just uh, those who to complete so that those who wanted to present yesterday but didn't have time can present. Um, can we do that? Okay, I assume it's yes. So, um, Radit, do you want to go, do you want to present today? Are you ready? Yeah, sure. Uh, but maybe a couple of minutes. 
yeah, until I open sure, the file. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, so maybe then we can continue what was um, Pascaline was asking. I don't know what was was that just an update or? Yeah, it was an update about uh, how was yesterday and what are we planning yeah. today and any blockers they need the tech tutors to help us with or even their fellows. Yeah. Yep. Good. So maybe anyone want to if you have questions and or updates please do so all right Basila. uh hey guys so yesterday uh i was also like most people just reading the challenge document and trying to figure out uh what was the task so i did get a bit confused like finally but specifically uh, and maybe yeah, but you could uh, also answer this. Uh, so I, I I saw the data and I did ask uh, Milky yesterday about what exactly we're supposed to do with the data. And so one part of the data, which is like the JSON object he gave us, I understand uh, how he recommended us, how he recommended we use it. But there are also other data, for example, like performance, uh, performance, uh, CSV files that the exam that link uh, the the performance of that that link the the ads with the, their performance like the CRM and other things and I don't know exactly how the those data points are meant to be incorporated into our project and what we're supposed to like what we're supposed to use them for so if anybody has an idea that would that would be nice that's a blocker we have yeah, so. You know, at first when we designed or when we were talking this project, you know, what they were interested is, of course, almost always they wanted to understand what is a good performing ad, right? And so that's why they had that data in a way, but then we, we, re we know that that's the very difficult part because the amount of data that you need to really recommend you know, high performer data, a uh, high performer a storyboard or ad is is a very complex phenomenon. So you can use it to rank, you know, what, for example, to find patterns where if this pattern happens, you know, in, in few places, it might be actually leading to performance. So if you are in a group, you could use that data to explore that form of, you know, what is actually within the patterns that you discover what actually leads to high performance, right? But that's a, a bit uh, quite complex actually, uh, and requires more data than, than they, they have even. So in that sense, I would say use it more of to rank and to distinguish between two things that, for example, if something happens there and something happens somewhere else, and the one, you know, the one that, if, for example, happens here, as higher performer, you might choose that one. So as a as a kind of discriminator, but I would say for now, much more of it is like layer by layer. If you think of it, the first part is, you know, how can I obtain the assets, either access them either from a given, like you know, that is given, or from generating them, right? So texts, especially, they might be given, they might be as well just you need to generate image the same and then as last time i think the first day um in the challenge box where i described the important part is for every item there are many semantic elements that you need to understand and as well also variables the first variables could be color texture and then beyond that position where it's uh, and shade as well as also order like is it on top or is it just on the bottom or in the middle transparency if you want to and you know there are a number of variables that you need to determine when you are composing elements so the first part is arrange them in in basically you know get get all items separately and then and so for that you don't need position and stuff but you only need maybe just a schematic then add work on the color layer you know that, that maybe that the color 
of all of these items now. And second is the position and where they are and what, what is going to be actually blocking another. And then interactivity, like what is the one that, in, that is going to be interactive? You know, like uh, is the text going to drop? Is the text going to kind of like blip, blip, blip? Or is the text just going to be static? You know, and then of course, all of that then decompose them into frames. Maybe just the first part is frames uh, before even color and stuff. And so you have to work for, for every item you iterate and then you have multiple layers that you have to do. So now when you do that, you might, you might find it useful, you know, to, to, dis, to use that performance data uh, to help you guide, especially in learning, in labeling. For example, you might, you might label, you know, for your machine learning, if you are using, you might use them as like the highest performer to be, you know, excellent and the other ones good. And then maybe the ones that are very like that, that are no good are, are poor. So something like that, you can use them as a label, you know, through just a performance range. But I think that that part is the next level of complexity. So if you are in a group, it's it's good to explore. But if you are doing it alone, better to actually focus on the very essential part, which is the generating the assets, putting them together, working as much in many layers as possible so that, you know, you control uh, much more and ultimately you know, what distinguishes, for example, this, like, instead of making the text top versus bottom, you know, what is your hint? You know, how, is that just, of course, the first part is learning from the assets, but when you learn from the assets, you know, which one should, should be much more um, you take into account. So, for example, if there are three texts, you know, three ads where there are, you know, 10 ads that are, there are, Texts and in five of them it's up in 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 uh, five of them it's down. Now you might say like okay I'm gonna choose mostly up or I'm gonna randomly generate, but I'm gonna use look also maybe the performance. And if the five that are down are high performer, then I'm gonna use the the high performers like the ones that are down, right? You can use it for that kind of element. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So I I understand. So practically in the generational sense it it it's not at the uh, utmost of focus but once we actually manage to generate the whole thing then if we want to rank uh, we can use it right yeah, but even in your generating you can imagine red versus blue you know you can use a high performer you know in which in ads if red is performing well you, you might use it so in every layer you might use what is a high performer but okay. we know the data is small and therefore it really is going to be hard to really rely on it. But yeah. But just like a ranking thing. So just, yes. just use it as, a, as an indicator to make a, a very possible good rank. Yeah. And that's what's like, because then you, if you use build that one as the data, you increase the data and you observe more of performance, you know, the algorithm would be even better. So it's like you can use it as a, it's called live learning. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, Brahan, and then we go to Rajit. Uh, am I on the way? Yes, you are. Okay, go good morning. And it's okay. very, very clear. The first time that I heard you, very clear sound. So well done. <laughs> okay. Um, so yesterday was uh, actually great. I tried to explore everything which is there and try to understand in depth what's required and what's what what should we know about it and details also and i tried to um the models which is the focus and uh, the other diffusion models not uh, except the gpt we already uh, tried that the dalle i think too so we have actually three models now to play with right if i'm not wrong so uh, as far as i see it's it's like the generation is like in a way, it doesn't get to understand the direct uh, commands in the direct, uh, let, let's say if I'm commanding, it generates these direct instructions. It's not following that. In a way, it will try to do something else. And uh, I don't know, we can 
I don't know how we can put that into it. And basically, if you see all the models, almost all the models, I tried them, they, they are weak on generating images, including texts. I don't know where, where whether their training data set does include, doesn't include those, I mean, the training data set. You, 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 you will not generate, you will not be able to generate that fully like that. It's just so, basically not possible. You know, the space of it takes itself is huge and the space of image is incredibly huge. So that means you're not going to be able to do that. So it's it's about control and being strategic. How can it's like any editor, any serious graphic editor will not generate big image. They will just going to be layer by layer. They construct multiple layers. In those layers, they put things step by step, right? They may put some filter here, some filter there. And then on this layer, they might put one text here okay. and, then, and the other. So you have to be combo. You have to think like, Composing it into multiple layers and working across layers, right? Okay, so now I have my question is like how we have an asset of multiple images. I think it's about uh, 900, 905 uh, like advertisement contents, and each, each of them contains images like around beyond 10 images. In a way, some of them are components, some of them are like frames, and some of them are storyboards, and it includes finally the video, the actual in the product so my question comes to here how can i use that data into my advantage let's say if i went to Just make learn it, it's about mm. imagine imagine this is infinite data what do you do okay, you learn so I, you learn what comes what what goes with what right you learn relationships mm. you learn colors the color space you learn uh you know what are features a lot, like you cluster them, you so identify have... objects, and then you try to, you know, like, you try to classify objects. Okay, so the first thing is we don't have labels. So can we, are you suggesting you have to, to generate label. automatically or manually yeah. label them? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, without that, well, how do you, how can you even start? So that's it's the whole point of, with the right? whole so point we... of YOLO and UNIT or whatever mm -hmm. deep learning you do is much more to segment from images and to label each of them and they are okay. most of the so networks. if we got the label of the data so we can use them mm -hmm. yeah go on oh. well, maybe dropped okay maybe brahan has just dropped you won Oh, great. So Trying I to create have our had... own model with that data. Is that the path that we should follow? What uh, you, you recommend? You, you, you were you were um during connection was dropped. So what like we, we what was the question again? Okay, my question is now you're saying that to level the inmates and understand you say the semantic relations and then the details about it. Afterwards just proceed to uh, creating a model using that that level data. Yeah, is that by, by a model even it can be just a simple model like it, it, it you you might not train a network to help you do that you might fine tune but you know the data is small to do anything more but yeah by labeling the color by first getting the object properties from it its location um it is color it's take you know whatever you can by first doing that it allows you then to learn later you know what are the usual you know you clusters of like okay uh, you know what where are mostly texts placed you know where are mostly um some kind of you know you can decompose images into multiple logos versus uh humans versus this versus that and then you can say like where are these mostly placed what are mostly the colors and how are colors between them if you now have colors for every of them you label them the colors as well then you say <laughs> what are the color compositions of mostly you know th these are so exactly it's about first is decomposing everything and using them as your assets you know and then you use models actually to decompose it for you that's called segmentation and then labeling each of those images and texts again using y yolo and you know others can give you actual labels as well and locations as well the bounding box and so you use that first to understand, and then later you will learn from them 
how if I have this type of asset, it, it, it can be just a simple rule. If I have this type of asset, I put them here. If I have this type of color, I, I, I do that. If I have this type of image, I will put this type of color, things like that. And then that's how, you know, the very first order just by rule, by just simple clustering rule, you basically then when you are given an asset, you will be putting them and ordering them. You, you create a storyboard for that. But of course, yeah. The question comes to the point that we are also generating the assets, the original, the smallest fragments of the frame is going to yeah. be generate, generated and also... But sometimes, but not always. I think you can't assume that you generate everything. So, but in this in this documentation, I think it says like no, that. No, I think it's not. Point. It's like mostly they you will be given an asset. So no one wants you to, like a big brand doesn't want you just to generate an image for them. But sometimes the background you might generate. So it's assuming that, you know, at first order, you might really assume just that the assets are given and you're just working only on the order. That is already big. You know, generating asset is not the, the biggest part. Uh, it's it's probably the much more simpler than you think. But, but in a way that because there are APIs that you can really access uh, images, right? You don't need to generate. You don't need to use any LLM. You have like, um, you know, stock, uh, stock, whatever, stock, and some others, just if you look at image APIs, they can give you, you can basically get images uh, or any type of image. And you have like Google icons everywhere. And, you know, there are many things that the web that can provide you. So it's less of importance that generating that more important is understanding and ordering. So, of course, you will generate of time, but don't take it that one as the main thing because most big brands will not allow you to generate uh, randomly they they have guidelines on that so let more let more is about okay how do i order things how do i now if i have this asset and that asset can i change the color should i remake it you know should i edit it slightly to fit this or to fit that and if i have n assets do i know their colors what is in that asset because you don't know the asset so you have to do the asset analysis to actually understand it. And then should I should you shrink it? Should you increase it? You know, all of this is what is much more harder. Now I get it. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Good. You won. And sorry, uh, yes. and we can go to you. Okay. Sorry. Just a bit. I, I just want to ask a question and then yeah. the next person can go. So um you have kind of like confused me a bit when you have said about labeling and segmentation and clustering so are we supposed to merge both physical labeling and using clustering and decomposition because if i understand how models class to so are we supposed to cluster them and then name them for supervised learning or it's just cluster I, 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 think, I, think, I think the the main problem is that you sometimes you're really thinking only just as a task okay i have one thing to do and then i mean it's not about you you want it's in general when you are junior mostly you have a task you want to do that task when you okay. are given when you are given something to work there is no there's no boundary you try everything that is that makes it work so when okay. I speak, usually I speak from that. But if you just think of it very slightly, like just yourself, if you were to design, now forget your code, you are just going to be designing an ad, okay? You are given now some type of assets and a previous, you know, library of ads. Now tell me how you're going to approach it. No, no code, no algorithm, no model just out of purely you are a graphic designer or some you know uh, creative designer what do you do uh, if i am given a library of ads and i'm told to generate other ads i will not, not generate create now generate okay. is a very okay word. i am create. told to create other ads i will first look at one what the ads are about if it's a certain topic and then i look at the company how do they generate ads? okay how do they no, create this is the ads? same company so Alludio, okay, you are for Alludio working they give okay. you a thousand ads there okay. are because you want to learn you know they you have to know like when you are hired you have okay. to know yeah 
So I look at number one, um, how do they gen how do they create their ads, the background? Does it do they have a specific shape? Do they have um, do they have videos? Okay, do they have like how do the images look? Are they black and white? Are they green? Are they red? This and then do they have um a watermark somewhere where where yeah. is the logo appearing? Yeah. Yes. So again, you, you know that when you look at this, they are very different, right? So but you're yes. learning. So logos are different, stories are different, orders are different, some are crazy amazing beautiful some are like much more plain things like that you learn that but you learn from the color you know first you look from color perspective from ordering perspective position perspective hue perspective you know like size and, and things perspective right so that's what you're just gonna do also if, if it's code it, you don't change you're gonna be looking at and then but in your head you are doing clustering as well you cluster okay some ads like maybe in this type of verticals so maybe for fashion there is a certain type while for you know auto auto automobile there is probably something else that's called clustering you're clustering them may patterns around maybe verticals maybe around texts like maybe when they are you know a certain type of texts they are maybe just different or you know when the background when there is a human actually it might be very different when you have a human versus non-human characters right okay. so okay. you're basically learning you know by looking at them to learn the company's interest and the company's creativity and then you extend that with your own of course creativity it's, okay. there's nothing there's nothing different you would do it's just okay. being systematic so okay. there because you had control, you had infinite learning capacity, and your LLM, call it if, if you want to call it, is super intelligent that it learns from a simple one or two even samples. It learns so much. And then it has also a background knowledge of incredible diversity. So, you know, then it's just, it can create from that. The LLMs we have and the models we have are not that creative, they're not that incredible. They just really have to be given a lot. So it's about the decomposing and being systematic then. So, okay. Yep. Yeah, is that clear? Yes. Okay. Good. Then let's continue to read it. And anyone else who wants to present the past week uh, of their work, even if it's not good, it's not about good or not good and anything, but just you want to show the people what you have done, you, um, you can, but read it, you can go now. <laughs> Let me share my screen. Uh, so oh, <clears throat> I know um, all of us are consumed on this week's project, so I'm not going to take much of your time. Uh, so I've used so first we'll see the smart contract, and then I've used the connect to the Cipollian test networks to connect with the test network, and the Alchemy API as I. Uh, API from an alchemy to use as an API and the frame hard knit framework to deploy and test the network and flutter as an as an for the for the drivers or for the mobile app and react for the admin page. So let's start from the smart contract and this is um just to explore the smart contract. What what I was thinking is there are three compliance that we we can give from for the driver that is bad, good and excellent depending on the you know, on, on the location and the timestamp that we that we're going to get and the comparison and the results. So here we're mapping the address and the location and the compliance labels which are stated above this one. Hmm. So here there are four events that we're going to pass. That is the first one is we're going to start working uh, and compliance checking and the salary paid and the reward paid. So the point is the, the drivers are going to get their salary paid whether they have then excellent or good, but the reward they're going to get is will depend on the compliance level. That is the aim. So on the constructor level, we're going to initiate uh, when initiating the smart contract, the employer and the rewards token, which is the ARC20 token. Um, so here the at the start work, the start work. So the aim is uh, the employer at the beginning, he will look the amount of uh, ethereum which is going to be paid and also rewarded for the driver if if he, if he had a 
a good compliance and so, uh, so he will also say in the longitude the latitude which is the location and the timestamp at the beginning so if the if the address or uh, probably because the constructor above is the unemployer or the account the sender is the employer so if the if there is the account of the employer then we the employer will be able to look amount which uh, some amount of ethereum and then he will send the locations in latitude longitude and timestamp so um, at the beginning we're going to give uh, the compliance level as far because we haven't seen any you know any, uh, we haven't done any comparison uh, and then there's the git location which is the the one that is going to be called by the driver and it's it also returns the the locations and the timestamp um so if the time is zero which means the the driver haven't seen any haven't sent any the timestamp or uh he hadn't yeah yeah he hadn't sent any timestamp if it if it is a number he had already uh, completed the work or he have already sent a timestamp uh so the So there is a compliance, uh, the location and the, the, the employer location and the driver location is, the employer location is, yeah, the, the you know, the locations that the employer will enter and the, there's the driver location. So mainly uh, in the compare strings, what we're going to compare is those three variables. And Brian, if, can you mute? Okay. So, Going. Okay. Uh, if the employer locations, uh, if the location which is the latitude and the longitude are equal, then we can continue to the timestamp. And if also the timestamps between the employer and the driver are equal, it's going to give them the compliance level of excellent. And else, which means only the the location where the latitude and longitude is equal, it's going to give them compliance level of good. And if not, it's going to give them compliance level uh, bad, which means they. Uh, both of them are not right so here is the compare string that that will compare the uh, to uh the the parameters up there and then there is the payment or the last event which is going to give the payment for the driver uh, so on the compliance level of excellent the reward token transfer will be from the employer's account to the reward its reward for compliance is uh, identified as one so it's he's going to get five uh, you know five ethereum and if not or if the label is good he's going to get three uh, ethereum as a rewards but after all the the, the salary is going to be paid um, um, you know, uh, even if it is bad, good, or excellent. So, in order to get the location and the um, timestamp of the driver, we've used I've used geolocator on, uh, which is a package to uh, to bring the the location of the device. So here we're we're going to get the um, location and also the uh, date timestamp, uh, which will uh record the time uh, uh no did i just say the time stamp no the time class which will uh, record the time that will the the driver will send the location so we have the time also the locations so that we can compare them and uh, there is the admin page uh, so on the army on the admin page we will have the employer address actually as i have told you mr abdubal we i'm not able to connect all of them just there is to see uh, to present my progress uh, so the point is the employer will send an address so that he can uh, access the smart contract with his own address and here he will put the locations let's just put some numbers and the latitude and the timestamp. So the point is, he, he can access his MetaMask wallet and also the smart contract. So that first he should uh, look some amount of Ethereum in order to start the process. Since the employer is going to initiate or start the process, uh, he he's going to start the process by putting some, uh, by looking some amount of Ethereum to the to, to his accounts. So the, he, this account is the smart or smart contract the smart contracts or the account that we're going to send the no that account that that is going to save the rewards and also there's another account that account that is going to uh, 
uh, save the payments and it's going to be synced from the uh, driver's account and yeah overall that's what i had accomplished or what i have what i was able to do, to do. thank you so, excellent and uh were you able to simulate like the the apps like doing sending or is it so like the one that you wrote is it now is it compiled and it, it can be it's a the mobile app part yeah the mobile uh, for now i'm not having an uh, android studio because uh, yeah, yeah my pc was kind of busy so i have not i'm not able to run it now but yes i was able to run it okay good great i think more than anything it's just i'm really uh, encouraging and thank you so much for reaching out and presenting this is the kind of habits i encourage and yeah it's excellent work you did and demonstrating that i think this is what i am encouraging everyone to do it, it, it is not just don't think about the momentary value that you get from the presentation but the overall long-term you know approach that you have in your career and nobody cares about people who don't present i mean i'm honestly it's like you have to be super excellent uh, to matter like if you're not talking about your work right so and that is much harder quest and than just really being able to present whatever you have or ask whatever you have and over time you you would basically be able to you know other people want to work with you and companies would like also people like that because they they matter most so if you are if your attitude is just i do the work and that's it uh think twice because the effort that you're putting here is so much more to just be you know to just be that and so i would really encourage people to fight to talk to present um so that you work sees the the day of the light right in every in a work environment your work to be used to make money either to save cost there are two things for businesses that matter either your work is saving cost so that means it is optimizing something that you you save money or it generates revenue and now if it doesn't then you know people you you however smart you are people don't that much care you know and because nobody cares someone that is experimenting all the time so i think reddit's a you know kind of way here what i want to also use today even if it's we want to talk about the current week project is this is more important than just work and if you haven't understood it so far ask yourself maybe ask questions because this is key okay and then i will stop there um and if there are questions now we if there are other people who want to present we can otherwise let's continue to this week's project i think um that is probably what what we want the conversation to focus but yeah thank you so much and maybe that you can uh, continue pascaline um and i'm in the background if anyone has question i will i will answer as well until time All right, thank you so much, Yabi. And for everyone who shared, um, who presented today. So we are left with just a few minutes. Um, let's use it for anyone who hasn't had the opportunity to share their progress so far. You can just raise your hand. Can raise your hand or i can ask a few people for instance daniel maybe, maybe, maybe yeah maybe just before that also i just looked now at the document mm -hmm. where everyone has to feel either in a group or individual i mean is there a reason why people are not feeling because i only see family and elias as group number one that's it um can we please fill that form because we want to know we will not accept just i mean for me actually we didn't enforce it but yesterday was the last deadline for that if you don't feel it then we assume you are working individual so if you want to work in a group then make sure that you feel that one now and i think i will make it afterwards uneditable because then i would then expect everyone to work just individually after that so if you are in a group please feel it if you are also individual just for indication you can put it but if if you don't put as an individual it's fine because we assume you are individual 
But if you are in a group, please just make sure that you fill that form. I mean, it's, fill that the Google Doc. All right. Thanks for a reminder, Yabi. Uh, let's use this time for anyone who hasn't shared. I was talking about Daniel. Daniel, are you there? Yes, I am. All right. Uh, you can share us your updates. Okay. Yesterday, I was uh, just reading about uh, the business objective and uh, trying to have the grasp on uh, on the context and different aspect of uh, concepts, which uh, I found on the challenge document. And uh, today, I will just try to implement uh, the concepts I grasped, as well as try to uh starting on the interim report and uh, that's all all right uh all the best with the reports um yep let's hear from our one last person a crown Ekram, Elon, Aaron, Lillian, Miss Gano. You can hear me? Yeah, we can. Good morning, everyone. So uh, yesterday, I was trying to understand the, the project. So yeah, I tried to, to look into the dynamic document. And I also try to I also try to read some of the the blogs and the materials. So yeah, mostly I was focusing on trying to understand the, the challenge. I was also discussing with with some of my friends. I guess now I have some grasp of the the project. So yeah, today I will continue working uh, yeah on that. Hopefully I will start with the image generation part, which is task two. Yeah, and I will continue working. Like that, yeah. Thank you. All right. Thanks for sharing, Miss Gano and then Ekrom. Yeah. First, I uh, I really want to apologize. Like I was in a new environment that I couldn't speak. So like uh, coming to my update yesterday, I was able to go over the challenge document and uh, again, again and again, I was checking the document in order to have a clear image. So like. Uh, Coming to the tasks that I did, I have referred like some of the resources that, that are given in the image generation task. So like I think I'm getting some understanding, but it's still I'm a little bit confused. So uh, uh, I hope that it will be cre cleared out once I'm getting in deep in the project. So my plans for today is like attending all of the uh, classes that we have in dig more in the project thank you all right amazing chrome uh if you keep facing that blocker please reach out in slack so that we and every, every fellow can have a discussion about it lillian hello can you hear me yep we can Okay, thank you. Uh, apologies for not answering back quickly. I was uh, correcting my mic. Uh, to give some updates, uh, I've been reading the challenge document and the resources that were given in this challenge document. I was trying to understand what the general business need is, uh, what I am supposed to understand, which framework I'm going to use, which tools is needed. And uh, I think I have the general understanding of what we need to submit this week and uh, hopefully today i'll start working on task uh, two i think the image generation part and start working on my interim report as well thank you amazing and Lillian. uh yeah keep it up with the report um let's ensure that we'll be submitting on time yeah okay so thank you everyone uh this was a good discussion during this stand up so let's go and focus on today's agenda 
And yeah, that would be it. See you next in the career session and also in CBS and um, the rest of the sessions.